Hi friends, I hope you're all doing great. Prepping up really, really well for upcoming CAT. I am sure many of you are a little anxious, but remember, it's a good sign. If it's important, you will be a little anxious. On that note, let's begin the session for today. In the last part, probability part one, we have covered the basics of probability. Continuing our discussion into some of the advanced but key concepts of probability. In this part, we'll be covering conditional probability, Bayes theorem, including the concept of total probability and Bernoulli's theorem or Bernoulli's trials as well. So let's begin into this part. Let's understand the concepts through questions. Starting with the first question. A family has two children. What is the probability that both the children are boys? Given that at least one of them is a boy, right? So let's understand how do we solve a question like this. First off, let's understand what is conditional probability. So probability of A when B is given is given as probability of A intersection B upon probability of B. Let me give you a very simple example, right? In this case, let's say there are two children. So what are the possibilities or the sample set? The sample set can be boy girl, girl boy, boy boy and girl girl, right? So there are four elements in this sample space. What is the probability that both the children are boys given that at least one of them is a boy? Okay, so probability that both are boys given this sign is called given or the sign of conditional probability. So both are boys given that at least one of them is a boy at least one is boy is given as probability of a intersection b intersection of both are boys and at least one of them is boy intersection of both are boys and at least one of them is boy so at least one of them is boy are these cases and both are boys is this case so intersection is just one case so the probability of this intersection will become one out of the four case divided by probability of this which is in the denominator so probability that at least one of them is a boy so probability that at least one of them is a boy will be one case two case and three case out of the four cases so three by four the answer here is one by three let's understand this application through a few more examples and it will certainly be very very clear my request to all of you will be to solve a few questions to get these clarity these concepts clarified 10 cards numbered 1 to 10 are placed in a box, mixed up thoroughly and then one card is drawn randomly. If it is known that the number on the card is more than 3, what is the probability that it's an even number? Now, what's the question? Probability of getting an even number when it is given that the number is greater than 3, right? Because it is known that the drawn card is more than 3. So probability of even given it is greater than 3 will be probability of even intersection greater than 3 divided by probability of greater than 3. Remember that's the formula. So what is the probability of even and greater than 3? So even and greater than 3 the numbers are 4, 6, 8 and 10. So there are 4 numbers out of the 10 numbers. So 4 by 10 and probability of any number greater than 3. So 1 to 10 you have 7 numbers greater than 3. So 7 upon 10. So what's the answer here? The conditional probability is 4 by 7. I hope this is clear. Let's understand it through one more example. In a school, there are 1000 students out of which 430 are girls. Now, it is known that out of 430, 10% of the girls study in class 12. What is the probability that a student chosen randomly studies in class 12 given that the student is a girl? Now, probability that the student is in class 12 given that the student is girl is same as probability of class 12 intersection girl upon probability of girl class 12 intersection girl how many students who are girls are in class 12 that is 10 percent of 430 right so that is 43 out of the total number of students which is thousand and what is the probability of girls 430 out of thousand right so therefore, what is the conditional probability here? The answer is 1 by 10. I hope this is clear to you. 
Let's move ahead and understand a, a few more concepts. In this question, we will understand the application of total probability. Let us see. A person has undertaken a construction job. The probabilities are 0.65 that there will be a strike. So probability of strike is given as 0 0.65. 0 0.8 that the construction job will be completed on time if there is no strike. How do you represent it? Probability, it is given that there is no strike. So S bar, right? Probability that there is no strike. S bar, that's given. Then completion of the work. The probability is given as 0 0.8, right? We also have 0 0.32, which is the probability of completion of the job if there is a strike. So probability given that there is a strike, what is the probability of completion that is given to us as 0.32, right? So determine the probability that the construction job will be completed on time. So probability that it is completed irrespective of strike or no strike will be given as probability. See there are two cases, either there is strike or there is no strike, right? So the first case will be probability of completion of the work when there is a strike into probability of strike. That's the first case. Second case will be probability of completion when there is no strike into probability of no strike, right? That itself is the concept of total probability. You should understand it very carefully because it is applicable in Bayes theorem, which is something that we are going to go in a few moments. So probability of completion First case, completion in case of strike happening. Second case, completion in case of strike not happening. Now, I think we have all of the things. Probability of completion of when there is strike, that is 0 0.32. Into probability of strike is 0 0.65. Probability of completion when strike does not happen, that is 0 0.8. And what is the probability that strike doesn't happen? See, the probability of strike is 0 0.65 then probability of no strike will obviously be 1 minus 0 0.65. We have seen this in the last part also. Similar concept when probability of something happening and something not happening, the same event will add up to 1, right? So 0 0.8 into I have to do 0 0.35 here. So 8 into 5 is 40, 8 into 3 is 24, plus 4 is 28. So this becomes 0 0.28, right? And how about this one? 2 into 65 is 130, 3 into 65 is 195, so this becomes 0, 5 into 3 is 8, and this is 9 plus 1 is 0, this is 2080. So 0 0.208, so this becomes 0 0.488, so that's your answer for this question, right? So I hope this is clear to you. Let's move forward and see a few more questions. In this part, we'll see the application of Bayes theorem. So what is Bayes theorem? Let's understand first, probability of A given that B is already happened is given as probability of B given that A has already happened into probability of A divided by total probability of B, right? It's just merely a formula until we understand the application. So let's understand the application through a question and then you will understand the essence of it. Let's see. Bag 1 contains 3 red and 4 black balls. Bag 2 contains 5 red and 6 black balls. One ball is drawn at random from one of the bags and it is found to be red. Find the probability that it was drawn from bag 2. Now, we have to find out the probability of it from bag 2 given that it is red. This will be given as probability of getting a red ball from bag 2 into probability of bag 2 divided by total probability of getting a red ball. So what is the probability of getting a red ball from bag 2? Let's see. Bag 2, there are 5 red and 6 black. So probability of getting a red from a black, from bag 2 will obviously be 5 upon 11. So this, this is 5 upon 11. What is the probability of choosing bag 2? See bag 1 and bag 2, there are two cases. So probability of choosing bag 2 is obviously 1 by 2, right? What is the total probability of getting a red? See, you can get a red from bag 1, you can get a red from bag 2, right? Like we have done in the last class, in the last question, probability of getting a red will be probability of getting a red from bag 1 or bag 2. Let's see. What is the probability of getting a red from bag 1? That will be 
3 upon 7 into probability of getting the first bag which is half plus probability of getting a red from bag 2 which is 5 by 11 into probability of getting bag 2 which is half so that's the total probability of getting a red ball now just you place it and you solve it so this is 5 upon 11 this is 3 upon 7 plus 5 upon 11 so if you just solve this this becomes 11 33 and 35 so 68 upon 77 now this is 7 times this multiplies here so becomes 35 upon 68 so that's the answer to this question a beautiful application of Bayes theorem let's solve a few more questions so that we are absolutely clear in a factory which manufactures bolts machines a b and c manufacture respectively 25 percent 35 percent and 40 percent of the bolts of their outputs 5 percent 4 percent and 2 percent are defective a bolt is drawn at random from the product and is found to be de defective what is the probability that it is manufactured by machine b so probability of it being from machine B given that it is defective will be given as probability of it being defective from machine B into probability of machine B divided by total probability of being de defective probability of defective from machine B is 4% so this becomes 4 into probability of machine B is 35% so I'll take 35 here what is the probability of total defective so you select defective from the first uh, machine or second or third so 5% is the chance of getting defect from A and 25% is the chance of getting the machine A 4% is the chance from machine B and 35% is the chance from machine B and finally 2% is the defective probability from machine C and 40% is the chance of machine C so what's the answer this is 4 into 35 becomes 140 this is 125 here you have 140 here you have 80 this becomes 220 and 125 so this becomes 345 so 5 28 times 5 6 times is 30 and 9 so 28 upon 69 that's the answer for this question i hope this is clear to you again a very beautiful application of Bayes theorem let's move forward and see the next question here this question is a very important application of Bernoulli's trials. So what is Bernoulli's trials and where it is applicable? In wherever case you have a repeated number of events, okay, one event is repeated several times and probability of the success or failure is fixed. Okay, let's take an example. For example, let's see you toss a fair coin and let's see you define getting a head as success. Then probability of success is half probability of failure is also half and no matter how many times do you do it probability of success and failure will continue to be half only right in every trial in such cases you can apply Bernoulli's trial so let's see how do you apply it okay when you do out of n trials if you require let's say success r number of times then the probability of success for r number of times is given as ncr into probability of success defined as let's say p here p raised to the power r and probability of failure which is q raised to the power n minus r so let's apply this in the first question exactly five heads how can you get obviously in this case it will become 8 c 5 into probability of success which is half raised to the power 5 into probability of failure which is also half raised to the power 3 so the answer is 8c5 into 1 by 2 to the power 8. I hope this is clear to you. You can all take the second question as a exercise. Solve this, put the answer in the chat. I hope it was a fruitful exercise for all of you. I hope it helps you get one more question correct in CAT this season. Wishing you all the very best. God bless you all. Take care and bye-bye.